and so my project today is to install a remote oil filter mount because as everybody knows f-150 oil filters are next to impossible to get to whatever full design that location never had to change one so what we're going to be installing today is a derail engine oil filter relocation kit um, the good thing is this is about a $50 kit. The bad thing is it's designed for two thirds of the vehicles out there and has more parts than an Ikea cabinet. So anyway, the problem is that, yeah, how, how do you get to this? So we're, let's get busy and uh, get some access. Even Ford realizes this is a pain in the ass because they put twist locks to get this part out. And that's great. You can reach your hand up there and blindly fumble with the fucking oil filter. So we're going to go a few steps further. So you need one of these. And the way this works is just insert it under here. And it will liberate these little pieces without damaging them. And background noise interference is provided courtesy of the construction crew replacing the fence that I got a day's notice on next door. One more. All right. That's a whole lot easier. All right. To create a little clearance, I'm going to remove this air dam. And uh, I'm just using an impact. So I'm going to remove this uh, stone guard. And the back two bolts just get loosened. I have a feeling all this Tupperware gets lost quite rather permanently. this would give me better access but the reality is nope it does not if I was gonna change the oil pan it would but this uh, oil filter is in about the absolute worst place you could ever think of to put it fucking idiot ass engineers it's up there and we're gonna get this out and the oil is gonna drain down here because that's really the only way you can change a Ford oil filter and I absolutely hate that and we're gonna replace it with an adapter and uh, hoses. All right, well, the good news, if you can call it that, is that uh, this is only hand tight. It'll be more good news if this is the correct no leak filter, but I don't have my help. I'm not holding my breath. Yep, it's not. And that's why I hate Ford putting this oil filter in this spot. Because it just goes every fucking place every time you change the oil filter. So let me go wipe up my hands. So next what we want to figure out is if this would fit up in here. And it, it's going to fit without an adapter. So at this point I'm going to drain this back. And next I gotta figure out which of these five is a fit for Ford. This piece is not gonna be needed. Um, so let me do that. So here's the first one. All right, this does not appear to fit. So we'll try the other side. Nope, 
That one doesn't fit. That one doesn't fit. That one doesn't fit. doesn't fit and hopefully this last one fits all right so we got one that fits that one's clearly gonna slide on there so now at this point we need to mount it in the adapter and we need to dispose of the other four all right so this snap ring needs to go in uh, if there's a way to do this that I'm sure I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna kind of figure it out. So we're gonna land one of these in this little groove and then just work our way around. There we go. So now the snap ring is in and that's a permanent part of this and in is here out is there so in out is closer than in and next what we need to do is take the o-ring and put a little oil on it so in this case we're just going to use a little bit of oil off the old filter for the purposes of lubricating this ring that's going to be just fine and then we'll just slip this in here And, you know, I, it, I would feel better about this if it was a perfect fit. So there we go. So let me change gloves and get set up to put this in. Next, this just goes on like an oil filter. With luck, this is the last time I have to screw with this location other than installing the hoses. background noise provided by a construction crew working on a fence about 10 feet away. All right. There we go. So there aren't a lot of good places. This is the ideal spot, but this hose is in the way, so it's a no-go. Over here isn't much better, so what, what works the best is actually up here, and hollow on the back side so I think I can put a, some screws in there and uh, you know it, it's just gonna be tight coming out of there so let's test that again looking at is we got plenty of clearance above it I mean, there's you know there's there's clearance so that's not gonna be an issue and uh, there's plenty of clearance above it and below it you know, so this will work. That's the location. The rail envisions using these little aluminum half-inch adapters with some, I don't know what kind of hose this is. It's not marked, so they don't know what kind it is either, with some little ace clamps. And I don't, I, you know, no, absolutely not. Yeah, and this is what the rail includes is this cheap rubber hose, some aluminum um, barb adapters, and some you know, hose clamps. What I decided to do is I went to my friends over at South Houston Hydraulic, that's SH Hydraulic. They're on Old Galveston Road in South Houston, Texas. And I had beautiful braided hoses made with swaged on ends. The one end is a swivel and the other end is rigid. And uh, this is a whole lot more suitable for a critical application like an oil filter line. So I'm going to use some True Blue uh, vibration resistant Teflon uh, thread sealant and I'm going to get these installed. Now unfortunately I tripped and I cut the heck out of my thumb, but uh, whatever. 
one step at a time. Okay, so to tighten these, you need, unfortunately, these are fixed ends that go to the filter adapter. So the best way to do this is to have a helper who is standing in front of the vehicle to twist the hoses. Otherwise, unless you've got a pet monkey, you're not going to be able to reach in here. And then this is a 7 8 fitting. That'll be different depending on what ends you're using. And uh, basically just tighten it until it won't tighten anymore. I have zip tied this in place because I want to check the clearance on this for the hood. So I'm going to shut the hood and see what it looks like. So I've decided this is the best place to mount this. It is a little higher than the engine, but it, that's my research in all the boat forms and the other engine forms. It ain't going to matter. But I do want to take this off to create some more space to work. So I'm going to use my lifter here. Noticing this, I did cut my uh, thumb pretty bad. I tripped and fell. Uh, and uh, anyway, my hand landed on a pair of wire cutters. In fact, these wire cutters, they're really sharp. Sliced right through the side of my thumb. So I had to go to the ER and get some stitches. So, eh, it is what it is. So, anyway, this is where I want this to mount. And uh, I'll be right back this piece of stainless angle that I've got to build a bracket and what's going to happen is oh by the way I had to get a side mount one and this is going to come up in here like this I'm fairly confident I got lots of room to do this uh, and I'm going to line up with one existing hole and then that means I can't use this fourth hole but I can use these other two holes I'm pretty sure these are quarter inch so let me get a bolt and check that so I've got a quarter inch bit this fits perfectly and these fit perfectly so I got quarter inch holes in this already um, and I like doing the top just because it's just a little easier um, I think I could probably drill the face and again that's a quarter inch bit um, it's really a toss-up as to whether I want to do that pretty sure if I did this yeah, I've got, I could put a second one here and then I could recycle that hole down there. So that's another option is just do two and face mount it. I think I'll do that. I think this is actually cleaner and it gets it a little lower with less work. So that's a quarter inch hole there. So what we need now is just to use that as a stud temporarily. a center punch so um, now what we want to do is we want to start that hole so we'll go ahead and do that with our little drill here so you want to be careful you've got a radiator right behind this so you don't want to just slam on this and go block flying through that.
and you want to look at the size of the chips your drill is generating when you see chips about that size you know you're making good progress you don't want to see little pieces that means you're going too fast So there's one, let me change my bit and we'll do the other. So now we're gonna bring it up to speed, or up to size. Same as before, we wanna apply moderate pressure, but slow speed. And I'm paying attention to chip size here. It's binding, so I'm gonna back it out. So I didn't want to get pulled into that radiator. So what I did is as a bound, I just um, reversed it and put pressure on it and it broke through. And I want this hole a little bit loose. Okay, let me go get some hardware. Be right back. All right, so the first thing I need to do is get my micrometer and figure out how deep these holes are, and I'm gonna do that by feeling it. All right, that's right. So I've got 0.15. And then I need to know the depth of this, which is 0.36. So 0 0.36, 0 0.46, 0 0.5 is basically a half an inch. And then I've got an overflow amount of about three quarters of an inch. So I need quarter 20 by approximately one inch. And that would give me a half an inch, maybe one and a quarter inch would fit in here. And I'm gonna set this up a little bit backwards and you'll see here in a minute why. So I'll be right back, let me go get some hard. So I'm gonna use grade eight quarter 20 bolts and they're gonna come through like this. And the reason is, is that I've got a lock washer on this uh, with a washer to back it up and it'll bind on that side, allowing me to tighten it. Should be relatively easy, and the shoulder should not present a problem. We'll see. You don't have a lot of room to work back here. This is why I think a lock nut and a, a bolt are the best combination because it acts like a stud all right so there's that one and then I'm just gonna back this up with my finger and that's gonna look good um, I need a washer on this side so let me go get that some reinforcements here just in case I need them This is a little bit harder with one hand, but I think we got it. I mean, that's that's kind of the start. Next, we need to get this second one in here before we go any further. And the trick to this is to pinch it between your fingers once you get it up there. So you just gotta kinda set it up there And then once you get it up on this little ledge that's back here, you gotta pinch the bolt with your fingers in order to kind of maneuver it. And try not to do that. All right, so I gotta fish that out of there somehow. 
let me figure out remarkably easy this has just enough give to slide out which freed the bolt so now we get to try it again and try and get this up in here almost this is definitely one of these things where you want to exercise a lot of patience and just let your zen flow There it is. All right, I need to find that washer. I don't know where the washer went. Um, it'll rattle out of here at some point, so let me go get it. About two years ago, I got really irritated with the crap hardware at Home Depot, and I bought a whole set of the most commonly used screws and bolts from a company called Bolt Depot that I really like. Um, and so when I lose a washer, I just don't stress. So here's how this is gonna work. Got to pull against it. Might have to get something back there. Let me see how much space I've got. Yeah, all right, I'll be right back. Okay. If I push down, I can generate enough torque, but I still need a deep bit, so let me go get that. So now this is on here. And you know, honestly, one would probably be sufficient, but I really want that like feeling of knowing that it's ultra secure. So on that note, let's see if we can do this. And this may be the slow march. I'm going to slip a ratchet back here because I've got to back this bolt up with something. Wow. All right, so I've got the ratchet in the slot, and now I've got to somehow work it over here. Remember, don't get frustrated, just let your Zen work. Because there's no clearance here. So if I tilt the wrench up, I can get it back here. bolt is right up against the back so what I'm going to do is I'll get a screwdriver and pull this out actually you know what? there's something else that this tool can do I've got a ratchet locked on there and I just need to hold it so that I can tighten this up.
All right, so let me go see. I think I have a, a ratcheting box wrench. I'll be right back. Find it, but the next thing, best thing was to just put the ratchet to work behind the bolt. Lock nuts engaging now, so that's a good thing. And I, I really do think two bolts is more than sufficient. And this is a little bit longer. I mean, you know, I could have gone with a quarter inch quarter, but it just would have been that much harder to get this in. And, and no, this isn't exactly level. Doesn't matter. It's gonna be really, really easy to service. So, now we just have to channel our Zen to recover the ratchet because this is really Houdini's toolbox here. And, First things first, we have to extract the socket. All right, so now that the socket's out, we can turn the ratchet sideways. Really not sure how this got in here, but if it got in, it can come out. So it barely fits in the middle. Yep, that's a tight squeeze, kids. There it is, it's out. The holes that got used was for securing the hood latch cable. So we're gonna zip tie it back in. In fact, let's see if I can use that, nope. So I'm gonna zip tie it through this cross member in a couple places just to secure it up here so it's out of harm's way. All right, you know, one one's fine. I'm not even mad at the clippers. It wasn't their fault they sliced the hell out of my hand. All right, as with all of my threads, I'm going to put some sealant on it. It's a little more challenging without the use of my other thumb but it'll be okay. And I gotta get rid of this excess that's in here. So we're gonna put this one in on this side. And this is the return from the filter. And I'm gonna need a wrench. Let me see if I can get this one to do the trick. Yes, I can. put it in. There's more to work with on this one so it's not such a pain in the ass to to um, put the pipe dope on and get it screwed in. And I picked these up from the company that made the hoses for me. A nice company called South Houston Hydraulic in South Houston, Texas. There we go. So that's done. Now, I've got two extra holes over here, and this kit came with plugs. And in case you're wondering, I'm using the 15709 um, horizontal inlet outlet, and it came with nice steel plugs. So let me go get an Allen wrench for these and get them in on this left side. All right, so got the first plug to go in here. And it is a 3 8 Allen key.
Somebody at Derail thinks that these silly little sheet metal screws are going to hold a filter still on a vibrating vehicle. Probably the same person who thinks these stupid little aluminum things are uh, acceptable. It's really just a crying shame. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and snap this back in before we call it a night. So that's all nice and tight. So we're going to go ahead and call it a night and we'll pick this up in the morning. All right, so I was originally going to run the hoses up through here, but I, I really don't like that. So there's this nice hole here and I can secure them to this object here, this little there's a little tab there. So this is how they're going to run. They're going to run through this space here and I think I can get under there. So. Anyway, um, I'm going to pull one of these hoses back through and just work on routing it through. So, there we go. Now, alright, I'm going to use the second hose as a tracer. Because I need, I don't know where this little gap is. So I'm just going to stick the other hose through there so that I can see what the heck's going on. So the basic idea, okay. All right, so, yep, I like this path a lot better. So that's my tracer hose. It can go over there. And then I need to see if I got all this. hoses are nice so now we need to figure out again I, I'm pretty sure I marked one of the hoses so I'm pretty sure I know which one's which but I need to go ahead and verify that before I start connecting them so this blue hose is my in which needs to go on my out from here so this is the filtered so we're gonna go ahead and connect that up there And then that means this hose, which I pulled back a little bit to get it out of my way. Let me make sure I've got all of it. This doesn't look as long right there. Yep, got all of it. So this one is my into the filter line. And now I need a wrench so I can tighten it. So I've got a wrench to hold this, and this is just going to keep the uh, clamp from from torquing when I'm tightening it. So I'll insert that in there. Not a ton. 
ton of space to work in here, but that's okay. talk about where these lines run. Again, this is mounted to the cross member. Had to drill one hole. It's not going to be a big deal. Braided lines. They were about $65 a piece. 60 bucks a piece. They're running through this hole in the chassis around the radiator. And then yeah, you got to come down here. Right. So they run through here under here, across there, to the adapter. And I think that's actually a really nice location. Now, there's another guy that fabricated a bracket here, but this is a pain in the ass to drill in here. Uh, it's a good location for the filter, but all the research that I did suggested that it's just not gonna be a big deal. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a minor risk of drain back, but, um, you know, when you start the engine, you should let it idle for, you know, 15, 20 seconds anyway. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm using synthetic oil, which is going to keep things uh, well coated until oil pressure builds, which won't take more than a couple seconds. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So, uh, did a lot of research on that. Um, and uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that. of the day the objective of this was to get the filter where it's easy to access and this is very easy to access um, I'm not gonna miss a little bit of interference in the cooling flow here down there on the uh, intercooler that that could have an impact I don't know if it would or not that's a big intercooler but anyway this is where I've chosen to mount it and uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this with um, new oil, and then I'm going to screw it in. All right. This isn't... Oh, well, yeah, I can get a little more in here. All right, that's not completely perfect, but that's pretty darn close. So I'm gonna smooth this out. And then we're just gonna screw this in. <clears throat> I'm gonna go get a paper towel to clean this up. Let's just take a second to talk about this. I have zip tied the hoses to reduce the possibility of vibration because vibration will cause chafing, which is the enemy of an oil hose. I did use this little clip that I talked about. I thought about doing that, but it was just really hard for me one handed to get in there um, and get that zip tie back up. As you may remember, I sliced the devil out of my thumb, so I had to get five stitches, six stitches. I don't know. I got stitches. And, uh, Anyway, so the doctor put it in a brace and that just limits what I can do with that hand. But I'm stubborn, so I'm still working on my truck. All right, so this next part is for all you negative Nancys that just like to bitch at me in comments. So first I want you to see where that oil filter stock location is, all right? And yeah, we're, we're higher up with the new remote mount, but I want you to see where that's at. And then I want you to look at this oil pan. And I want you to notice that the oil filter is above the oil pan to begin with, and the bulk of the oil is in the back, which means that's where the pickup for the oil pump is going to be located. Now, this engine has hydraulic lifters, which means when it starts, it's got a pretty high, it's going to have a high pressure, high volume oil pump in order for it to run hydraulic lifters and run the engine and lubricate the turbos properly. And what all that means is that five or 10 seconds of building oil pressure isn't gonna hurt the engine, especially not with a synthetic like Mobile One, which is uh, a little bit stickier and it's just, it, it has a tenacity to stick around. 
So anyway, um, I did a bunch of research and the consensus on the marine engines where they run high performance engines and you never want the filter in the stock location was that it just doesn't matter. Um, it's going to get up there. So the first time I start this, you know, I'm going to leave it alone for a minute or so, make sure all the air gets out of the system. But the reality of it is, is that the oil is not going to drain back through the oil pump. Uh, at least I don't think it is. And, and if it does, it's going to build real quick. Um, so if the oil pressure builds back through the oil pump, then you know what? Ford took into account that it takes a second for oil pressure to build and two seconds isn't going to hurt anything. At the end of the day, it's my engine, my truck, my decision. But I, I have chosen to be able to do maintenance easier and more readily and to increase the filter media capacity over having a filter in Houdini's preferred location where only a monkey or a, um, you know, somebody that's a contortionist can get to it, and that's with a lift. So all I can say is to whichever engineer designed that location, this spot here why could the filter have not been there come on it wouldn't have been that hard to modify it or right there or right there there's just plenty of space down there for a filter and you could have put a hatch in this tupperware that's underneath this truck so i call bullshit on the location for the oil filter and uh shame on you to the engineer that cheaped out and put it there because i'll bet this is a really easy place to put this when the body is not on the truck and it's like the super duties where you got to pull the cab to pull the engine that's horse shit anyway uh and the soapbox rant um so it's time to button this thing back up and get it back to being a truck on the road and stop being a chevy in the in the driveway he must one-handed i'm gonna use the oil pan now, you may notice that I'm missing the cover for the power steering pump, and that was because I thought maybe that if I removed it, I could actually use it for something. But, you know, that was wrong too, so, you know, whatever. All right, so we're just gonna set that there while we acquire the first bolt. And this is a pain in the ass to begin with. It would be less pain in the ass if I had the full use of my second arm. But, you know, it's okay. All right, now for my next trick, where is the second bolt? Oh, there it is, right where I thought I left it. Always start your bolt by hand. So that's two of them. Now I gotta find the other two. And the oil pan has to come out. a Tupperware will be easier to do from this position, and I will certainly remember that. There we go. Tupperware installed. I'm going to get a regular wrench ratchet so I can make sure these are nice and tight. And I'll be right back. Alright, so next we're going to tighten the these bolts just I'll make sure they're nice and tight. That's the last thing I want coming loose while I'm driving. And they are half inch bolts. I'm not sure if you guys can see this one. But it's a good pro crazy lens on it. All right, feeling good. And my zip tie project 
uh, back here. I just don't want these hoses to rattle or vibrate at all. And again, this would be a whole lot easier if I hadn't cut my thumb. But I'm still getting it done because, well, I'm stubborn and I got shit to do. one more zip tie and then I'll be done. Go ahead and start this one but we're not going to tighten it down and the reason is I'm going to slide it into place. Let me get past that one. I kind of wonder how life existed without zip ties but and here are the cutters that slice the hell out of my thumb, but it's not really their fault I landed on them. All right. All right, so this one's gonna be a little tricky. I don't know how good your vision's gonna be on this, because I'm basically, in a little corner here, but I want one more zip tie up in this spot. my clippers I was laying on them now I'm gonna clip this and get out of its way all right so I feel real good about that I'd, I'd like to eliminate this movement so I'm gonna look yeah I think I can get another zip tie in here here and you guys probably can't see it but I can feel it surprised to see there's some real sharp burrs on this frame right here. I don't know what caused that. I know I certainly don't want to run my hand across it. All right, let me try that from the top. feeds in from the top a little better. Check the 
all caps in place. big of a deal uh, oil pressure came up and uh, hopefully it's flowing in the right direction as long as the in and out ports are correct that's the return clean this is the dirty oil coming in for filtration and of course that's our filter so we're gonna let this run for a few minutes and um, then we'll look for leaks downstairs For a few minutes i've shut it down and i'm looking and not seeing any leaks that's a happy sign let's look under here not seeing any leaks not seeing any signs of leaks i think we're done well, that's a happy thought because this project has taken a lot longer and cost a whole lot more than i expected it to but this time we're back in place all right so this piece goes here, and then this piece goes up there, and then this one goes there. There's an order to the wickedness. Yep, sure is. Oh, it's making my hands hurt. All right, that one's in. air guard which I'll do in a minute. So let's see how this goes. Because this was a pain in the ass to do in the first place. Alright, so there's one. Oh, that's surprisingly easy. up. So what we'll 
do the fixed one first because one of these has a washer and the other has a slot. All right, and this project is done. Uh, talk about drain back. I want you to watch that oil pressure gauge right there. It's a little bit better. There you go. I just want you to watch that. I'm going to start this. Truck's been sitting for probably five minutes. And I'd say that there's really not an issue with drain back at this point. Um, oil pressure came up right away. Hold steady. Rev the engine, the oil pressure stays steady. That means there's a pressure regulating valve somewhere. Anyway, I don't think there's any issue with drain back. This project's done. Very, very excited about it. The only negative is the Fram orange filter is easily visible through the grill. So it's probably gonna get painted. Easily see that filter glaring out through the grill. So it's actually gonna get painted right now. Lost black, but that's what I had on hand. Um, that's a big improvement. I went ahead and painted the hoses, uh, so I'll pick up some flat black at some point and uh, that'll dull this down. Use the box that came in as a uh, overspray shield. And again, this is just a quick and dirty, nothing magical. It vanishes like everything else. It really needs to be a flat black, but it's a whole lot less noticeable, so it doesn't jump out at you from a distance now.